In 2010, Connected Living was awarded grant funding for its project, Getting Illinois Low-Income Seniors and People with Disabilities Online, by the NTIA's Broadband Technology Opportunities Program and the Partnership for Connected Illinois. The two-year program is now complete, and we have gained extensive knowledge about the value of a simple-to-use training program and about the challenges that even now face low-income seniors and people with disabilities in closing the digital divide. Over the course of the next 20 minutes, we'll hear feedback from our program partners and participants, combined with the voices of Connected Living leadership staff, talking about the impact of the federal dollars invested in this program. The first challenge we encountered was that although access to the Internet is prevalent in public venues, the majority of our program participants had not only not been online, but had little understanding of the value of being online. Our program partners were passionate about the value of the training and were our best advocate to the potential trainees. I think seniors don't use computers for the reason people don't try new things all the time, even young people, because they don't want to fail, they don't want to be made a fool of, they, they want to be successful. How important was in the computer training? Mm -hmm. I think that you could, you could give a person a camera who doesn't know how to use it and it's just a paperweight. It would have been the same thing with laptop computers. Without the training and instruction that's required to use it, it's, it's, like, having a, it's like having a violin and not being able to play. We never tired of hearing the success stories. We delivered training at 60 locations and all of the stories of reconnecting with family and friends, of job searches, of medical information or e-government resources found, the most heartwarming were those supporting how the senior was able to reconnect and stay connected to family members and friends. From my perspective, what I think worked well at the Connected Living training, my perspective is that it was nice for the community. The seniors can stay connected with their relatives, especially emailing. My thing is come into this class, learn what you can. They come in, they learn how to email, they sit and email. I have a 93-year-old student, I have a 97-year-old student. Come in, email your family. I think that was the greatest thing they could have put into this program and the Skyping part of it. They staying connected. Training that they received from Connected Living enable them now to be in a position where they can help themselves. And going on internet, or communicating with their grandkids, or communicating with their friends, whether this in the United States or international, uh, has given them a sense of importance. And I think that is one of the greatest success that we can see, is when people get to the point where they just don't have to depend on every other people to do basic things. From the perspective of each unique partner, we ask them to review their own organization's transition from beginning to end. Now that we're, we're sitting here really just about two years into the Connected Living program, I'm, I'm almost in awe of, of the level of success that we've had with this. You know, early on, I think all of us, residents and staff alike, kind of had this idea of, um, Boy, 80-year-old residents learning how to use computers. You know, it just didn't, you know, you wouldn't put the two, the two together. And yet what we saw over a period of a couple of years was, you know, 20, 30 residents um, getting computers, um, gaining computer skills that they had never had before, overcoming anxiety about using brand new technology, and to actually see it in practice. Um, seniors corresponding with one another over the internet, uh, being able to send email to grandkids who may be, you know, several states away, things like that. I think it's been an, an incredible asset for the seniors themselves. Over and above that, it's been a true asset to the building. What I'm finding from the residents is they did not know what was out there. They did not know, uh, the feedback I keep getting is, what did I do without computers? What did I do without internet? In this room right now, we've also made it a library and our resident was very afraid to even touch a computer. Now she's working with the computer to help figure out how to set the library up. So it's really, really a, a good um, uh, tool that they never knew they had available. And because the program made it available and we made it available to the residents, it has expanded their world. This program was not without its challenges for our program partners and our program participants. 
For our broadband service partners, much of the challenge was in educating the program collaborators on broadband and network technologies. The initial challenges were just getting organized with the communities to, because this is a new process for them. So uh, they weren't quite sure what to expect uh, or what they should be doing uh, or what they even didn't know. So we had to guide them through the process of uh, what types of networks could be built within their facilities, uh, what were the, the benefits to each network type, uh, and then uh, how it was best to implement it for their residents uh, to benefit both the residents and the community in an ongoing basis. Additionally, a challenge for Connected Living was to recognize and foster the engagement of the collaborator partners in the program. Uh, the stakeholders in a program like this are the administrators of the building, the Housing Authority building, the families and the friends of the, of the residents involved. And we worked with every level of, uh, of, 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 uh, that worked with the resident. We wanted everyone to be involved. We wanted them to invite their families and friends to join them on the website. We wanted this, the administrators to have their own username and password so that they could connect to the people in the buildings. We encouraged all sorts of co connections. And the more they got involved, the more successful the program was. Program participants had their own unique set of challenges and reflected the substantial challenges many of them faced on a daily basis, separate from this learning opportunity. It's hard for anyone to admit they don't know how to do anything, but it's very hard for an adult who has lacked the opportunity to have education to say, I still don't know how to read. And so those barriers um, were huge in the, in, in the buildings we were in, uh, and the ability for a CPM to work with these individuals and, and give them the confidence and give them that safe haven to say, I need extra help because I can't do this, uh, was so important for the success of the program. That was, you know, a surprise when we came in and found out that we were not only working with low-income residents, we were working with people with physical disabilities, people with social disabilities, people with uh, 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 learning disabilities, people with illiteracy um, of all ranges, and not just one of those handicaps or social issues, but multitudes of those wrapped together in one individual. And we had to bridge the gap of how do we get to uh, helping a, a person that had multiple problems. And we, we, we figured out a way. We jumped into it and we, we weeded through a lot of these um, challenges. We quickly realized the need for addressing the specific and unique challenges presented by our participants. This required us to deliver a very flexible training model, meeting the needs of each housing authority and program participant. We addressed each program participant's challenges oh, with creativity and compassion. To help the population establish confidence, we gave each person their voice. Absolutely, I mean, I have a story for every single person, every, every single instant that I went into a building, I met someone new and was able to identify with them on some level and took the time and the community program managers that spent every single day at these buildings took every moment that they could to learn their story. And once these people realized that they, they did matter, they had the confidence to come in and they knew that they were in, I guess, a safe haven, that they could ask the questions. They didn't have to worry about being scared or being made fun of or being ridiculed that they didn't know how to do this. Uh, and it creates confidence. In addition to establishing the labs that were built in each Housing Authority resident building, the Connected Living BTOP training program had several key components. Our trainers were called Community Program Managers, and they were the on-site trainers in the Housing Authority buildings for the first 11 months. Once the initial wave of training was complete, we transitioned the training management in the Housing Authority buildings to a volunteer-led training model, using training class graduates as the on-site trainers. Classes for residents were held in parallel and recurring 6 to 12 week sessions. Once complete, the class member was given a basic computer and internet skills assessment, testing their skills competency for basic computer and broadband use. We used the proprietary Connected Living Network as the online training tool, and combined that with classroom-led training curriculum. Once the program participant passed their assessment, they were provided with the use of a laptop and broadband until the end of August 2012. 
We are certain that these highly valued incentives supported the program's strong response and believe that tools like a computer and broadband provided the foundation for lifelong learning and adoption. As you know, we were the only supportive living program uh, that, that was part of, of BTOP. And, and very simply, supportive living housing for senior citizens is really designed for low-income clientele. Um, our folks get by on a very nominal amount of Social Security after their living expenses. And clearly one of the things that has been most attractive and helpful about the program is that this gave low-income seniors access to tools that they might not have ever been able to access given their financial situation. And I think that impact has been absolutely huge. The accomplishment of completing the training class and being provided with the use of the laptop and free broadband was celebrated with a graduation ceremony. In every case, the graduation was the culmination of the program's accomplishments, highlighting the efforts of the collaborators' involvement and the success of the residents who participated. Graduation for our residents was an important factor in many ways. One, it was a milestone for the residents that they completed that part of the program and that they were moving forward. Beside that, we found out that about half of the residents that graduated from the program had never graduated from even high school. So this graduation was a big, big deal. And they got a sense of pride. They got to know that they accomplished something in life. Okay, I might have only gone through eighth grade or ninth grade, dropped out of school, but they accomplished something. I think the impact that I've seen with seniors using the computers, first of all, the graduation was phenomenal because they succeeded and they were very proud and it was such a wonderful event to see the seniors greeted by their families and for some of them it was their first and only diploma. But I think what that did with the initial classes, it inspired the others. Today we celebrate! Oh, oh, oh. Graduation. <laughs> graduations I'll probably cry right now <laughs> um, you could have the worst week of your life and go to a graduation and seeing someone that is so proud of something they accomplished it's it's what you're doing and that impact on your life knowing that you've you've helped someone do something if it's self-confidence if it's their first time they've ever graduated if now they're talking to a loved one that they hadn't you can't help but let that affect your life and realize the importance of programs and organizations that do this every day in and out um, have on everyone's life involved. So they were, they were awesome. And there was cake. <laughs> Over time, our program expanded to include non-congregant living sites. We called these our outreach sites and consisted of churches, park districts, senior centers, area agencies on aging, health care, and community organizations. These anchor institutions were located within the same general geographic neighborhoods as our program collaborators and were built around the social model, where the participants did not live in the location, but merely visited or attended functions there. We used volunteer trainers provided by the host site and trained by our BTOP team and provided our Connected Living online network, curriculum, and Connected Living customer center for learning support. I'm a member here at the Apostolic Church of God, and I had the privilege of uh, being the trainer for the Collected, Connected Living Program here, which was truly uh, a blessing. Oddly enough, I was one of the first students in the class, and um, I already had a basic knowledge of computers, but me being retired, I chose to uh, introduce one of my friends to the program. I said, we need to kind of take a look at this. You know, you could brush up on yours and I can brush up on my computer skills. So through that class, um, a lady by the name of Betty Shepard, she was one of the first instructors, and she uh, noticed something in me to ask me if I'd be willing to train the class. I said, sure. You know, so I was able to uh, go to one of your uh, sessions of train the trainer and I was able to learn the basic skills in uh, conducting a class, which uh, I embraced and uh, I was able to bring it back to uh, my church. The impact and results for seniors participating in this program was heartfelt. This program has made several major changes in, in our residents' lives, uh, one of which was there are a lot of people out there looking for jobs, looking for work, 
and they did not realize that the job search is made so much easier through the internet. There's several areas that they did not know without leaving their house, without leaving the building, no matter what the weather was outside, they could still job search. And we actually had several people that found jobs through the internet, through our buildings program. I think the impact of the program on those students that were suffering from a social, social disorder or literacy that completed, it, it opens up new doors. If they've, if they've accomplished something that has hindered their abilities thus far in their life, if now they can walk into a computer lab and feel confident and use it, They've, they've taken 10 more steps than they did before we walked into the building. And those partners who hosted the program had several observations to share as a result of the strong showing from residents and constituents' participation in the training program. It's walking into our community room and seeing seven or eight of the residents uh, down working on their laptops and the Wi-Fi. There. That's something that we've never seen before, and I still see it even now. Uh, those who really... Uh, who really embraced the technology and the things that they've learned, to see them continuing to utilize it. One of the differences that I've seen in the building is, as a result of the program is there's a crowd around the fifth floor computer lab. In a lot of cases, it gives some folks a reason to get up, I gotta get dressed, I gotta eat, and I gotta get myself over to the computer lab. And certainly what I'm talking about here are motivational qualities. You know, this is a program that really grabbed people's interest and when you have someone who's really interested in, in something like this they're more motivated to be interested in other things as well and I think we saw a real improvement just in the motivation of our seniors to get involved in things. What I've found with the uh, exposure to the internet uh, what's going to help us is that now we have a lot of residents who have email addresses we have a lot of residents who are connected and we are now gathering email addresses of our residents so we can put email notices out to our residents directly. I think that the impact is you can't touch it right now because it's brand new. But what I hear the seniors talk about is how they're now going back to school because they feel left out. And again, you're encouraging, you're helping them tell their children's children the importance of education. Uh, what it means to uh, connect to the outside world. Demonstration programs, by their very nature, are meant to test theory and concepts. Over the course of the past two years, we were able to test concepts and in most cases, course correct if necessary. The success of any program often is the result of what went well. In this case, the success of the program is the result of the flexibility of addressing the issues and making them into opportunities. There were components of the program that, that worked very, very well for us, namely the level of um, teaching and hands-on education that was provided to the seniors. I, I, I think it has so much to do with the positive outcome that we had with this program. The fact that um, Connected Living staff were willing to take hands-on time and instruct seniors, and, and we know um, to certain degrees that seniors respond differently. Um, new learning, especially with technology, can be difficult in the first place. Uh, with seniors, it, it may be more so, and the fact that the program was so hands-on, I think, was a real help to the seniors that got involved. From my perspective, what worked well was the ability to get state-of-the-art equipment and set up computer labs within our senior sites that we wouldn't have had the resources to do without that partnership and the grant with the, the Connected Living Community. In addition, which was really an added benefit, was the ability for our residents to receive their own personal laptop computers uh, for their rooms and to have internet service for a period of time. Uh, what worked well, I think, was the fact that he had good instructors and you hear some guaranteed deliverables. You don't want people coming to these kind of classes and uh, they walk away with nothing. Uh, many, many government-ran programs aren't as effective and efficient because they, they don't, it's not marketed correctly. And then when people come with high expectations, they leave with nothing. Here, we make, uh, Connected Living make promises. If you take the classes, pass the assessment, and have brought been added to your home within, I think, three to six month period, you are guaranteed a refurbished uh, computer. That was a deliverable that they could touch and feel. And the fact that even though they already have computers at their home, 
uh, they were able to now learn how the, to learn the basics of how to operate a computer, how to cut it on, how to get on the internet, how to interface with uh, their, their grandchildren through chatting, through emails, how to get online to do everything else, because there's a whole world out there. And what Connected, Connected Living has done for our parishioners here has opened up the world. Let me see you do it once more. Nothing's perfect, and part of the good was that we learned a lot from our program partners who were very open and honest with their feedback. Each challenge was met head on and learning every step of the way. We want to make certain that programs like ours are sustainable, and the only way to do that is to listen. If there's something that I could change in, in the program now that we've uh, been into it for a couple of years is um, I would love to see the program from the Connected Living side just, just go on much, much longer. <laughs> I'm sure we, we all feel that way. You know, it was, it, it was hard sort of having, having to, uh, to, to say the goodbye. Um, the other thing that, that I would change or that I would develop further would be outreach to the community at large. I think that uh, together in our collaboration, we, we were very successful at, at doing that. But by the same token, I know that there are other folks and, and really primarily seniors out in the community who may still be able to live in their, their homes or their apartments who don't have this service that could really benefit from it. If I could change something in the way the BTOP program through Connected Living was uh, administered or set up, there's two areas, one which Connected Living I don't think has much control over, but sustainability. Um, the initial BTOP grant, from my understanding working with the Connected Living, was set up to get the equipment out there, get the connections out there, get the necessary hardware and the people to train the hard, people with the hardware. That program was very, very successful in my opinion. It did a great job getting the people connected initially, but there needed to be, through the grant, which is part of the government issue, um, a little bit more money to continue the internet connection, to continue maybe some basic training, because in a building like ours, there's always turnover. So the new people coming in, we'd like to give the same opportunity as the people that are already here. Connected Living would like to thank the NTIA and the Partnership for Connected Illinois for the opportunity to participate in this strategic program. The 5,250 low-income Illinois seniors and people with disabilities who are provided with the training opportunity, the 4,216 that graduated, and the 2,889 that adopted broadband stand alongside us as we look to the next opportunity to partner together and deliver strong results. I would recommend the program highly to, to any other supportive living uh, facility with, with absolutely no reservation. Uh, number one, the impact for the seniors themselves I, I think is measurable. Um, as I spoke earlier, you see people getting up and being motivated. It's something new, it, it's something exciting. I, I think the effort that you put forth in just onboarding a brand new program at a supportive living facility finding the staff who were not only committed to this process but also I think had a very heartfelt commitment to the seniors themselves was just absolutely extraordinary <clears throat> and I think your, your company is very well suited for doing this kind of work with senior citizens. What I would say is I would encourage any community, uh, any legislators that are looking at doing legislation or any state or local officials to just walk into one of those labs in one of the communities to go in during a class session or during a group discussion and to see the eyes of, that were formerly dim light up with a new excitement about learning new things, doing new things, and ultimately sharing those things with others. It is so sustainable. Uh, we are going to upgrade our lab, computer lab. I asked for them to shut it down and now to upgrade it. So now it's a part of their 2013 uh, capital improvement budget. I can have three and four sets of classes in there, in, in the lab, and we have like 22 computers in the lab as well. So uh, the classes are here to stay because the computer world is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Connected Living established a very strong presence in low-income housing by bringing in a computer lab into the housing uh, authority building, bringing in a staff person who could be a hands-on established help to teach them and bring a sense of confidence to a resident that where they could actually help them 
build a sense of confidence using that equipment, getting online. It was almost a magic potion to bridging the gap between not understanding how to use the computer, not understanding how to get online, not understanding how to write an email, and all of the pieces fit together with the, with the, with the curriculum, with um, the equipment, with online, you know, with getting online, the, just, the, just the use of the portal, the curriculum, and the staff person, it was kind of like a magic pill that really fit together. They were here to help them every step of the way. So did, did, was the curriculum alone um, a magic pill? No, but the combination of everything together was, I think, uh, a perfect formula for helping people feel that confidence to get online and learn what they needed to learn.